All right, guys, what is up? Mr. Rushka here. Okay, we're just going to have a little video recording of the Chapter 4, Section 3 notes, which is just more practice with word problems over systems of equations. Okay, so let's start with number one here. Can you get the fast food restaurant, four cheeseburgers, and five small fries? Have a total of 2,310 calories, three cheeseburgers, and two fries. Have a total of 1,330 calories. How many calories does each item contain? Okay, so we wanted. The, what are they asking us? They're asking us how many calories does each item contain, or how many calories, right? So X is an unknown, right? How many calories do the cheeseburgers contain? So cheeseburger calories. All right, and they're asking us what? They're also asking us how many calories the fries contain. All right. What do they tell us? They have four cheeseburgers. So four cheeseburgers times the number of calories in a cheeseburger plus, oh, sorry, plus five orders of small fries times the number of calories in a fry equals 2,310 calories total. And three cheeseburgers times the number of calories in a cheeseburger plus two fries times the number of calories in a fry equals 1,300 calories. 30 calories, okay? So these are our two systems of equations right here, okay? Let me just write those a little neater. Okay, so, and then we'll just solve these like we usually do, okay? So let's see this one. None of my coefficients are one or negative one. Um, you can do this with substitution if you want. I'm just gonna use uh, elimination, okay? So <clears throat> looking at this, I know if I multiply this four by negative three, it's gonna become a negative 12x multiplying this three by four, it's gonna become a positive 12x, negative 12 plus positive 12 is gonna cancel out, okay? So let me try that. So multiply both sides of my top equation by negative three. Multiply both sides of my bottom equation by four. All right, that'll give me <coughs> negative 12x minus 15y equals, what's 2,310 times negative three? I'll give me negative 6,930. Okay, and then the second equation will give me positive 12x plus 8y equals 1,000, what's 1,330 times four, what is that? 5,320, all right. Let me add these two equations together, add everything up, that cancels, we get negative seven y equals, uh, let me add all this up, 6,930 plus, I guess it's negative 1,610 divided by negative seven on both sides. We get 230 for y. So y equals 230, okay? Good job. Okay, so that's what we got for y. All right, and then I can just plug this result into one of my original equations, actually, since I, so I don't have to deal with as big of coefficients. So let's do 4x plus 5y equals 2,310. So uh, 4x plus 5 times what is y? Y is 230. I have it highlighted there. Equals 2,310, okay? Five times 230, that's 1,150. Subtract 1,150 from both sides. Get 4x equals okay, 2310 minus 1150. That's 1,160. Okay, so I have 4x equals 1,000. 160 divided by 4 on both sides, I get x equals 290. All right, so let's put these in the back suitcase. So our answer has to answer in context, right? What was x? x was the number of calories in a cheeseburger. y was the number of calories in a fry. So, so, fry, so burgers, so cheeseburgers have... Uh, 290 calories. Fries 
have, right, that's my Y. My Y is 230, so fries have 230 calories. All right, so that's going to be my final answer right here, okay? All right, there we go. Number two, one month, the homeowner used 150 units of gas, 520 units of electric for a total cost of 8420. Next month, he used 210 gas, 405 electric. For a total of 82.35, find the cost per unit of gas and electric. Okay. What are they asking us? Cost per unit of gas and electric. So let's make two variables. X is cost per unit of gas. Okay, Y is going to be cost per unit of electric. All right. So 210 units of gas, okay? Um, so, okay, here, for, well, this first sentence right here, right? 150 units of gas and 520 units of electric make, came up to a total cost of 8420. So if we do 150 times X, right, plus the cost of electric, that was 520 units of electric times Y, the cost per each unit, that was a total of 8420. And then 210 units of gas, so 210x plus 405 units of electric, so 405y. That was used for a total cost of 82.35. So we got our system set up. Okay. Fortunately, we got some big numbers here. Let me think of a, what would be a good way to do this. Um, hmm. We could do substitution. Oh, would that be a pain in the butt? Let me look at the least common multiple of some of these coefficients. So LCM. I'm looking at, I'm going to look at my X's since the coefficients are smaller. They're a little easier to work with. So let me see if I can't find the least common multiple of 210 and 150. It's 1,050. Ah, I think I'm just going to have to bite the bullet here, guys. Okay. So, right. So over here for my X's. If I multiply 150 by negative 7, this is going to come out to 1050, negative 1050x here, okay? If I multiply my 210 by positive 5, that's going to come out to positive 1050x. Those will cancel out, okay? So it's not fun, but I just got to deal with these big numbers right now, okay? So here's my system, okay? So I'm going to multiply both sides of the top equation by uh, negative 7, Move this over here. Okay, so negative seven times one fifty is negative ten fifty x. Right, negative seven times five twenty. It's negative. 3,640y. Okay, that equals what's 8420 times negative 7. It's going to be negative 589.4. Okay, multiply both sides of the bottom equation by what were we saying? 5, positive 5. Okay, we get positive 1050x. It looks like a 6. We get positive 1050x. What's 5 times 405? That's 2025. Y. Then equals what's 8235 times 5. Oh. That's 411.75. Okay. Woo! All right, let's add both of these equations together. X is canceled. That's fun. And then negative 3,640Y plus 2,025Y is negative 1,615Y. All right, that all equals negative 589.4 plus 411.75 gives me negative 177.65. Woohoo. 
All right, let's um, divide both sides by negative 1,615. Woof. We get y equals get y equals 0 0.11. Okay, so that's my y. Oh my goodness. And then let's go ahead and take my y here and plug it in to my top equation right there. So I'll get I'll get 150x plus 520 times 0 0.11 that equals 84.20. Okay? So that gives me 150x plus what's 520 times 0.11? That's 57.2. That all equals 84.20. Subtract 57.2 from both sides. We get 150x. Oh, whoops. Sorry guys, just gotta use my calculator over here. It gives me 150x equals 27. Okay, and then divide by 150 on both sides. It gives me x equals 27 over 150, which as a decimal is 0 0.18, okay? So let's, so we got my x and my y. Let's interpret these in the context of the problem. X was cost per unit of gas. So X is going to be, so gas cost unit, gas cost, what is that, 18 cents in a unit of electric cost, what is that, 11 cents, 11 cents. There we go, so this will be my answer here, okay? So pause, rewind, slow down if you need to, ask Mr. Miller questions. All right, so that's what I've got for number two. Good stuff, good stuff. All right, number three. Number three. Kim is renovating the first floor of her home. She bought 750 square feet of laminate flooring, 520 feet square feet of carpet. That was a total of $2,717.25. Then she went back to the sport store, got an additional 100 square feet of laminate flooring and 75 square feet of carpet, and paid $174.75. Find the cost per square foot of each type of flooring. Okay. Same to you, her guys. Okay, so what are, they, what are they asking us? They said find the cost per square foot of each type of flooring. Okay, so X is going to be cost of one square foot of uh, laminate flooring, laminate floor. Y is gonna be the cost of one square foot of carpet. There you go. All right, so let's look at this first sentence here. She bought 750 square feet of laminate flooring. So 750 feet of laminate flooring times the cost per square foot plus 525 square feet of carpet times the cost per square foot. That total was 2,717.25. Yay. All right, second sentence gives me, okay, an additional 100 square feet of laminate flooring. So 100 square feet times the cost per square foot of laminate flooring plus the 75 square feet of carpet times the cost per square foot of carpet that came out to a total of 374.75. There we go, there you have it. So there's our system of equations here. All right, let's maybe move this over a bit. All right. Whew, okay. How do I want to do this one? How do I want to do this one? All right, guys, you might not love this, but 
everything. So I notice here. So I, there's, I can do this. You don't have to do it this way, guys. You can use substitution. You can try like getting these, finding like the least common multiple of these two numbers or these two numbers. Okay, those are gonna be massive numbers. What I do notice, guys, is 100, 750, 525, and 75. They're all divisible by 25. They're all divisible by 25. Okay, so what I'm thinking is, hmm, what I'm thinking, guys, you, know, you might not like this, but I'm gonna go ahead and multiply both sides of both equations by one over 25, which I can do, right? I can do that because I'm just multiplying both sides by the same thing, which is what we've been doing all along. I want my problem to have easier numbers to work with. So this top equation becomes, okay, 750 over 25. That's 30, so 30x. plus 21y, all right, equals, one hundred eight point six nine. okay, and then this bottom one, 100, 1 over 25 times 100, that's 4x, plus 3y, equals 374.75 divided by 25 that's 1499 much easier to work with much much easier to work with okay so let me go ahead then okay i just noticed if i, if I multiply this 3 by negative 7 that gives me negative 21 negative 21 here plus my positive 21 y that'll cancel out so let me do that so to multiply both sides of this equation by negative 7, multiply both this by negative 7. Okay, that gives me, so I'll just rewrite the top equation. Bottom equation becomes negative 28x minus 21y equals 14.99 times negative 7. That's 100. 4.93 okay add these together i get 2x this cancels so 2x equals i'm oh, sorry this should be a negative 104.93 so then 108.69 minus 104.93 that's 3.76 divide both sides by 2 get 1.88 so there's my x got that all right over the hump we're over the hump here okay then i'm going to use i can use my original equation all right those numbers are really big i can also use this 4x plus 3y equals 14.99 so let's do that so i have 4 times 188 plus 3y equals 14.99 Okay, so this right here, that's 752, so I get 752 plus 3y equals 14.99. I'm running out of space, so I'm just going to work down here. So ignore the whole jelly beans thing. So I have 752 plus 3y equals 14.99. Subtract 752 from both sides. I get 3y equals, what's 14.99 minus 752? 7.47. Divide both sides by 3. We get y equals 2.49. There we go. So interpreting this in the context of the problem, what was my x? My x was cost of one square foot of laminate floor. So laminate floor is... my x that's 100 $1.88 per square foot. OK, 
Okay, and then carpet. That's my Y. That's two dollars and forty-nine cents per square foot. Okay. So there's that. Final answer. Okay, so screenshot this real quick. Rewind, pause, because I'm about to delete all this stuff in the bottom. Okay. All right. Number four, Sean bought 1.8 pounds of gummy bears and 0 0.6 pounds of jelly beans and paid 10.26, went back to, the, okay. So this is, uh, hopefully you're noticing a pattern here. These are basically like all the same problem, okay? So what are they asking me? What's the price per pound of each type of candy? Okay, so I'll make X the price of one pound gummy bears, okay. I'll make Y equal to the price of one pound of jelly beans. Okay. So 1.8 pounds of gummy bears times the cost per pound plus 0 0.6 pounds of jelly beans times the cost per pound. That total cost equals $10.26. In this next sentence here, he went back to the store the following week. He bought that 1.2 pounds of gummy bears times the price per pound plus 1.5 pounds of jelly beans times the price per pound. That total was 15.09. Boom. There we go. Fun, fun times. All right. Fun, 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 fun. Okay. Let me think what I want to do here. I could do substitution. Um, I could do that. I could do substitution. Let me think. All right, so I notice I have this 0.6y and this 1.5y, okay? So I notice if I multiply this 0 0.6 by 5, I get 0.3y. And if I multiply this 1.5 by negative 2, I get negative 3y. And those two will cancel. So let me, that's going to be my strategy here, okay? But again, there's no like one way to do all these, okay? So multiply both sides of this top one by 5. Multiply both sides of my bottom by negative 2. So that's going to give me 5 times 1.8. That is 9 x plus 3y equals what's 1026 times 5 51.3 all right and the bottom will give me negative 2.4 x minus 3y and that'll equal negative 30.18 let's add them up y's cancel out 9 minus 2.4 is 6.6x that equals what's 51.3 minus 30.18 that's 21.12 divide by 6.6 .6 on both sides x equals 3.2 or 3.320 since this is in the context of a money problem so we want to round to the nearest hundredth okay so that's my x and then i can take this plug it back into one of my original equations up here so let's plug it into this bottom one 1.2 x so i get 1.2 times 320 plus 1.5y equals fifteen dollars nine cents okay so then i have one equation one unknown i can solve this for y gives me 3.84 plus 1.5y equals 1509 Subtract 384 from both sides. Get 
1.5y equals 11.25, divide both sides by 1.5, you get 7.5 or 7.50 in the context of the problem, okay? So then our answer gives our, x and, oh, gives our x and y variables back in the context of the problem. So what was x? x was the price of a pound of gummy bears. So gummy bears are going to be $3.20. Don't forget my dollar symbol per pound. Okay, and then my y was the price of a pound of jelly beans. So jelly beans we know are seven dollars don't forget my dollar sign seven dollars and fifty cents per pound there we go Whew. fun all right so that's my final answer for number four okay so pause rewind if you need to ask mr miller for help okay let's move on to number five Courtney's got a total of 88 stamps. They're worth $15.56. Some are 25 cent stamps and some are 2 cent stamps. How many of each does she have? So what's the question? How many of each or how many of the 25 cent stamps and how many of the 2 cent stamps does she have? Okay. So my two unknowns here, my X equals a number of 25 cent stamps. Okay. My Y equals my number of two cent stamps. Okay, so there's that. Um, I know she has 88 stamps total, so the number of 25 cent stamps plus the number of two cent stamps equals 88. Okay, and they, they're worth a total of 15.56. So if you do 0 0.25 times the number of 25 cent stamps plus 0 0.02 times the number of two cent stamps that gives you a total value of $15.56, okay? So there's that, okay? I'm gonna use, you could use substitution on this one pretty easily, but you can also use elimination on it pretty easily. Okay, so you got x plus y equals 88 here that's a lot simpler to work with. I'm gonna use elimination, okay? Just because if I just multiply this 0 0.25 by negative 4, this becomes negative 1x. Negative 1 plus positive 1x, that's going to cancel, okay? So let's multiply both sides by negative 4. We get x plus y equals 88. And then this is negative x minus 0 0.08y equals, what's 15, 56 times negative 4? Negative 62.24, okay? Add both side, both of these equations up. Those My x's cancel. That's 0.92y. That equals, okay, what's... And then my constants, when I add my 8 with my negative 62.24, I get negative 54.24. Divide both sides by 0 0.92. Okay, I get y oh gosh get y equals negative 54.24 divided by 0 0.92 that's oh gosh rounded to the uh i got 58.95 i got negative 58.95 guess what guys well you can't have a negative number of stamps nor can you have 0.95 stamps so i know i messed up somewhere let's see what i messed up okay so ah uh, i see where i messed up when i copied down this 88 down here instead of writing 88 i wrote eight yep that'll mess you up that'll screw you up so i don't have to do too much backtracking here yet luckily okay so you always check your work guys don't want us to make a bunch of stupid mistakes this should be an 88 so this constant here, when I add my constants, so let me, let me back back up a little bit. When I add my constant terms together, instead of being negative 54.24, I'm going to get, okay, what's 88 minus 62.24? What is that? I'm going to get 25 
0.76 for my constant, and divide both sides by 0 0.92. I get y equals 28. There we go. Sorry about that, guys. I get y equals 28. And then I can plug that into here for y. So I get x plus 28 equals 88. Subtract 28 from both sides. I get x equals 60. And final answer, just put it in the context of the problem. What was my X? It was the number of 25 cents, 25 cent stamps. So he has 60 25 cent stamps and 28 2 cent stamps. All right, that's my final answer right here. Final answer. Okay. So go ahead, pause, rewind, slow down if you need to, okay? Number six. Tom put 18 gallons of mid-grade great gas in his truck and filled up his five, empty five-gallon gas can with regular gas. He spent 59.61. The following week, he put 14 gallons of mid-grade gas in his truck and topped off his five-gallon can with just one gallon of regular gas. If he paid 39.75, the prices remain the same. Find the price per gallon of both types of gas. Okay, so what are they asking me, guys? They're asking what's they want the price per gallon of mid-grade gas and the price per gallon of regular gas. Okay, so let me label my variables. X is going to be price per gallon of mid-grade gas. And Y is going to be the price per gallon of regular gas. All right. Let's think about this. So the 18 gallons of mid-grade gas times the price per gallon plus the five gallons of regular gas times the price per gallon of regular gas. That equaled $59.91, okay? So I just got that from this first sentence here, okay? They're being a little tricky here, okay? He filled up his empty, his empty five-gallon gas can, so that means he, he bought five gallons of regular gas. He bought five gallons of regular gas, okay? If he filled up an empty five-gallon can, he bought five gallons of the regular gas. And then it just says here, he put 18 gallons of the mid-grade gas in his truck, okay? They get tricky here in the second sentence. The following week, he put 14 gallons of mid-grade mid gas in his truck. So 14 gallons that he bought of mid-grade gas times the cost per gallon of mid-grade gas is 14X, all right? And add to that what he spent on regular gas, okay? Look at this. Okay, what do they say? They say he topped off his five gallon can with just one gallon of regular gas. So he bought one gallon of regular gas, right? So the one gallon times the cost per gallon of regular gas, that total bill was 39.75. All right. So this one, you can use substitution here. You can solve for y. I'm going to use elimination, okay, because I notice if I multiply this 1 by negative 5 and I add it to positive 5, those two are going to cancel out. So multiply both sides of this bottom equation by negative 5. Okay, I get 18x plus 5y equals 59.91. Then I get what's negative 5 times 14? Then negative five times positive one. That equals what's thirty nine seventy five times negative five. There we go. So here's my two equations I can add together. Okay, eighteen plus negative seventy. That's negative fifty two x. My y's cancel out. That equals 59.91 plus negative 198.75. That's negative 138.84. Okay, divided by negative 52 on both sides. 
I get x equals 267. There we go. That's my x. Okay. And then I'll plug this x in here to the second original equation. So I have 14 times 267 plus y equals 39.75. Now I have an equation I can use to solve for y, okay? So 14 times 267 is 37, 38 plus y equals 39.75. Subtract 37, 38 from both sides. Okay, that cancels. I get y equals 237. Whew. All right, so that's my y now. Finally, that's just going to be just interpreting x and y in the context of the problem. What's my x? My x is price per gallon of mid-grade gas, so... Mid-grade gas That's gonna be uh, Two dollars and sixty seven cents per gallon And then regular gas Is gonna be two dollars and thirty seven cents per gallon That's my final answer right there there we go. Boom. There we are. Okay, so that's my final answer. Good. Number seven, total of $12,000. Okay, I'm pretty sure my pre calc class had like an identical problem. I'm pretty sure we did this exact. I'm pretty sure this is right out of a pre calc textbook. All right, so total of $12,000 was invested in two types of bonds. One pay, pays 8% simple interest, while the other pays 10.5%. Last year, the annual interest earned on the two investments was $1,145. How much was invested at each rate? Okay, so I'm sure some of you guys remember compound interest from that first test, okay? This is not compound interest, okay? This is simple interest. This is simple interest, okay? Simple interest, okay? Simple interest. What that means is... All they're asking for is the interest earned. So they just want to know eight, what they're telling us, right, is 8% of what we put in one account plus 10.5% of what we put in the other account gave us a total interest of 1145 okay? So they're asking us how much was invested at each rate. They're asking us how much was invested at, so X is gonna be the amount invested at 8%. Y is gonna be the amount invested at 10.5%. Okay, that's my X and my Y, okay, right there. All right, so what they're saying is if you take um, the total interest earned, so I'm going to write one, equals 1,145, right? The 8% I earned on the amount of money I put in the 8% account plus the total uh, interest I earned, so 10.5% times the amount of money I put in the 10.5% interest account, that's going to equal 1,145, okay? So that's my first equation. My second equation, right? The amount of money I put in the two accounts has to add up to a total of $12,000 because that's how much money I started with, right? That's how much money I started with, okay? So this one, okay, I think I'm finally gonna use substitution because this doesn't look simp this doesn't look too easy to just eliminate a variable, okay? So I'm just gonna just go ahead and, and I've got, an, two coefficients of one right here. So I'm just gonna subtract y over here. So that'll give me an expression for x. So I have x equals 12,000 minus y. Well, then, I'll, then I'll go ahead and plug this x into this other equation, okay? 
So we get 0 0.08 times x. What is x? It's 12,000 times y, okay? So 0 0.08 times 12,000 minus y plus 0 0.105 y, that all equals what? 1,145, okay? Now I have one equation with just y in it, so I can solve for y. Let me distribute, okay? 0 0.08 times 12,000. It's gonna be 960, okay? Minus 0 0.08y plus 0 0.105y, that equals 1,145, okay? Combine my like terms here, negative 0 0.08y plus 0.105y, that's, um, did I do that wrong? I, uh, no, I didn't do that wrong. So it's gonna be 0 0.025y, okay, plus 960 equals 1,145. Subtract 960 from both sides. going to be 0 0.025y equals 185, okay, all right, I'm going to do this over here, 0.025y equals 185, divide by 0 0.025 on both sides, I get y equals, what's 185, divided by 0 0.025, that's a big number y equals 7,400, yep. So that's my y, let me find my x. Okay, what I can do over here, right, is I can take this y, I can plug it in for y over here, okay, so then x equals 12,000 minus 7,400, or x equals 4,600, okay, so there's my x. Okay, now final answer, just reinterpret x and y in the context of the problem. So this is, my x is the amount invested at 8%, so I invested, so $4,600 at 8%, and my y is the amount invested at 10.5%, so that my y is $7,400, gotta get that dollar sign at 10.5%. Okay, that's my final answer here. Woohoo, one more problem. Thank you for bearing with me, guys. I know this isn't fun, but it'll help you learn, okay? So go ahead, pause, rewind, slow down if you need to, ask Mr. Miller questions, okay? Here we go, here we go. Greg needs at least a dollar sixty in stamps to mail a package. He's gonna get that dollar sixty of stamps with twenty eight stamps and four cent stamps, and he can't use any more than twenty stamps as he only has one book left. Okay. All right. System of linear equalities to represent the situation. Then graph. Okay. All right. So my first linear inequality. Right, so my two unknowns is he's going to have use some amount of 28 cent stamps and some amount of 40 of four cent stamps. Okay, so we'll let x be the number of 28 cent stamps he uses, we'll let y equal the number of four cent stamps he uses. Okay. So let's see here, right? So he's got dollar sixty total in stamps. Okay. So if you take zero, if you take twenty eight cents times the number of twenty eight cent twenty eight cent stamps plus four cents times the number of four cent stamps, that total value's got to be at least right. At least means it's got to be greater than or equal to. 160, okay, and then that's going to be my first inequality. Second inequality comes from the second sentence. He can use no 
more than 24 cent stamps as he only has one book left. So the amount of 24 cent stamps so that Y has to be less than or equal to 20. See, since he can use no more than 24 cent stamps, okay? So there's that, all right. Good, okay, here's what I'm gonna do here. So I gotta graph both of these inequalities. This equation's a pain in the butt, guys. This is a pain in the butt, royal pain in the butt. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna multiply both sides of this equation by 10, by positive 10, and I can do that, right? I'm not breaking any rules of algebra, right? That gives me a new equation of 28x, or inequality, I should say, 28x plus 4y is greater than or equal to 16. <laughs> So much easier to use. Actually, that should be 2.8x. Um, oh, no. So I multiply by 100. Sorry. So that should be 160. Okay, there we go. This is right. 28x plus 4y is greater than or equal to 160. 160, okay? Good. Good. All right. So first of all, let's graph this y is less than or equal to 20. So I'm going to let these go up by 10. So this is going to be like... 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, okay, so on, okay? So Y's gotta be, this is, here's my Y axis, here's my X axis, Y's gotta be, let me, let me color code these, okay? So I'll do pink for Y is less than or equal to 20, okay? So I'm gonna graph Y is less than or equal to 20, so I'm, I graph that just like the line Y equals 20, and I use a solid line. because it's y is less than or equal to 20, okay? What do I shade? So this line, this pink line, is the line where y equals 20. I want y to be less than that, though, so I'm gonna shade below the line. Below the line. Okay. Then I graph this other one, okay? I'm gonna put it in slope-intercept form, so subtract 28x from both sides. I'm gonna highlight this in green. Okay, so subtract 28x from both sides. Okay, that gives me 4y is greater than or equal to 160 minus 28x. Divide both sides by 4. I get y is greater than or equal to 40 minus 7x. Okay, so I graph this green inequality just like the line y equals 40 minus 7x. Okay. So it's a y-intercept of 40, 0, 40. And then my slope is negative 7. So that's over 1, down 7. Now, since I'm going by 10s, down 7 means I go to about here. I go to about, about here. I'll try. And I'm going to draw a solid line because it's y is greater than or equal to 40 minus 7x, okay? Okay, so there's that. All right, let's look at this. Let's look at this. Okay, so this green line is the line where y equals 40 minus 7x. I want y to be greater than or equal to 40 minus 7x. So I need y to be above this line. So I'm going to shade everywhere above the line in green. Okay, I'll fill all that in. All right, and then right part B is going to be using your graph of two possible combinations of stamps that Greg can use to ensure he mails his package with the correct postage. Okay, so the, all the points that uh, all the right points that I can use are going to be are going to satisfy both the inequalities. Okay, graphically speaking, the points that satisfy both my inequalities are the points where both colors are shaded in. Okay. So they said two possible combinations. Okay, well, let's do, here's the point here. What is this? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. Okay, so let's just do the point like 11 comma 10 right here. So let me get a darker color. This point right here, that's 11 comma 10. Right, so the X is 11, the Y is 10. 
right? So he can use, so he can do 11, what's my X number of 28 cent stamps? He can do 11, 28 cent stamps. And he can do 10, well, four cent stamps. All right, that'll give him at least $1.60 in stamps and then less than or equal to 24 cent stamps, okay? So that's one possible solution. Or he could do, yeah, screw it. I mean, he can just do, he could do 12, let's look at this, 12 comma zero. He could do 12 28 cent stamps. All right, and zero 4 cent stamps, yeah. Yeah, forget four cent stamps. Those are for losers. He doesn't have to use any. All right, so that'll satisfy both my conditions. That'll give him at least a dollar sixty in stamps and less than or equal to four, less than or equal to twenty four cent stamps. Okay, so that's the end of my problem. The end of my notes. Okay, so go ahead, guys. Slow down. Rewind. Pause. Ask Mr. for Miller. Ask Mr. Miller for help if you need it. Okay, so take care, guys. Looking forward to getting back to you.